Hi everyone, my name is Carlo Furnua and I'm a market analyst at ESIG Intelligence. And today, I would like to talk about the most recent vaping product trends in the US. To do so, we're going to mix data from our nicotine tracker and our flavor tracker, but also from our latest US consumer survey and vape shop survey. So this is the agenda for today. First, I would like to introduce you to ESIG Intelligence, who we are, what we do and what we can offer. After, we're going to talk about the vaping sector in the US and the most recent influencing factors from all different perspectives. Then, we are going to enter to the body of this presentation, talking about the three main trends we observed, which are close pots, refillable pots and nicotine salts, and lastly, flavor profiles, looking at the most popular and their complexity and evolution. And we are going to end this presentation summarizing the key takeaways from it. So first, for those who don't know Visic Intelligence, we are an independent data provider company giving detailed market and regulatory analysis for the e-cigarette sector worldwide. We currently cover more than 40 countries in the market side and over 70 jurisdictions on the regulatory side around the world. We have a large variety of customers from vaping associations, manufacturers, pharmaceutical companies, government bodies like the FDA, and educational institutions who trust in the impartial and objective information we provide. So now we move on and we are going to identify the market trends and the factors that have influenced the US vaping market recently. We've divided them in three categories based on their nature. So first we have the Valley crisis in late 2019 and the negative media surrounding electronic cigarettes that resulted in a big drop of users and therefore demand. Um, and this turned away the less engaged papers and those who started vaping recently from, from the category. We also had the COVID-19 pandemic that has not had such an important impact in terms of market growth, but it has changed purchasing patterns. We've seen a reduction of purchasing occasions and an increase of basket sizes. We've also observed consumers buying a lot before the crisis in order to have enough stock in case of lockdowns. And it might also have affected the, the supply side as many independent shops had to, had to close or have suffered uh, an important drop of sales. On the demand side, we've also observed several trends such as the convenience of getting vaping products, which has boosted perfume pot's popularity due to the large number of points of sales. And we've also observed an increased demand of portable devices, resulting in a reduction of their size in order to make them similar to ways of use of pots. Um, on the supply side, we have the PMTA, which has affected a lot of the industry, as we expect the offer and variety of products to, equate, to decrease quite, that, quite drastically in the, in the following months, as many brands will try to keep their offer as simple as possible. And that's something we are going to see in this presentation, how has the PMTA affected the supply side of the market. We also have um, innovations in flavor delivery, we are seeing hardware manufacturers trying to improve, improve their flavor delivery with innovations such as the mash coils, which are much better at bringing out the flavor of the of products, of the liquids. And then we also have new hardware functionalities that go in line with the reduction of device sizes that we mentioned before. Basically, hardware manufacturers are trying to develop new features and improving the functionality of their devices to make them small but complex enough to cover all vapor's needs. In that sense, we've seen even small pot features to change temperature or to change from mouth to line to direct to line with just one button, which is something we did not have not that long ago. And lastly, from the regulatory side, apart from the PMTA, which affects the supply side, we have a flavor ban, <coughs> which might have a strong impact, and it's something we'll have to keep an eye on. As we're already seeing, and we will see in this presentation, some industry players adapting their offer due to these regulatory changes. Now let's see how all these trends and changes are reflected in the data and what's going on in the US both from a demand side, which comes mostly from our yearly consumer and VIPs survey, and from the offer side, coming from our online flavor tracker and nicotine tracker, which we run every quarter and analyzes the offer of top five online retailers longitudinally. So the first point, the first thing I would like to talk about are perfil pots. And I want to talk about them because they show fairly well how regulation can have an impact on the market. So firstly, it must be mentioned that close pods are the most important category in the US, as 
as our form factors estimation shows. In fact, last year they represented half of the US BP market. Moreover, it has experienced substantial changes, particularly due to regulatory facts. So the data we see now comes from the top five US multi-brand retailers specialized in vaping and therefore represents the supply side of the story. What we see in it in the chart above are two important drops in terms of offer. First, when Juul pulled out from convenience stores most of its flavors due to regulatory and public opinion pressure. As a consequence, consumers who used to buy their products through this channel had to change to online and as a result, many websites run out of stock of non-tobacco and cooling flavor products, as tobacco and, and cooling could still be found offline. Moreover, we can also observe a drop in Q2 2020 due to the flavor ban that affects all flavors except tobacco and menthol. In that sense, we can see in the chart below that this ban is fully enforced online as only those two flavors are offered currently. Continuing on profile pots, we've observed an ongoing drop on the complexity of their flavors, which has been accentuated in Q2 2020 due again to the flavor run, as tobacco and menthol are generally less complex than the rest of flavors. In that sense, since tobacco is currently the most important flavor, I think it's worth taking a look at those flavors combined the most with it historically, being vanilla the most common. So that was all for profil pods. Now let's move on and let's talk about refillable pods and nicotine salts. And why? Well, because we've been observing, and as you can see in the first graph, there's a growing usage of refillable pods. It must be mentioned that this 8% in 2019 is not a real percentage, as this data comes from our consumer survey, which is mostly distributed among advanced users. And in fact, the real percentage we believe to be around 20%. However, it is still relevant to observe that those devices are getting popular among advanced users, and this goes in line with what we see in the second graph, that basically says that those who have refillable pods as a primary device tend to use less secondary devices. And the reason behind this lower secondary device usage is that refillable pods are getting more and more complex with time, moving from simple devices with small batteries to more complex and versatile hardware and kits, which have new technical features meant to adapt to every vapor's baking style. And this growing popularity of refillable pots has had an impact on the average nicotine strength of liquids in the market. On the left, we can observe that the US is the country where average nicotine strength grows the most out of the seven countries where we carry out our brand tracker tool. Must be mentioned though, that in France, Italy and Germany, EU restrictions set a limit of 20 mg per ml in the liquids, limiting the average concentration these countries can reach. And that's particularly important because we can observe on the chart on the right that it's actually because of, of those liquids that have over 20 mg per ml that the, that the US average has grown that much during the last quarters. This increase in the average nicotine strength offered online in the US is explained by nicotine salts, which have been continuously gaining ground during the last three years to the detriment of free basic liquids. However, it is also interesting to point out that the average nicotine strength of nicotine salts is slowly going down. So now it's time to move to the third and last part of our analysis, where I'm going to talk about flavors, as they are also very affected by trends and regulations. What we can see here is the complexity of flavors. This is the number of components each flavor has. And what we can observe on the graph on the left is a very slow trend towards less complex liquids during the last year that has been accentuated in 2020, potentially due to the PMT. Moreover, hardware innovations in flavor delivery reduce the need of adding shapes to flavors as the flavor the consumer receives is every time more intense and pure. This has also been speed up by a greater presence of nicotine salts in the market, which are generally less complex than free-based nicotine liquids although we can observe on the chart on the right that there's a decreasing complexity in both nicotine salts and free base liquids. Apart from the complexity of the liquids, it is also interesting to have a look at the most offered flavor profiles and their evolution, as the US is generally a bellwether for future trends in other markets worldwide. 
If we have a look at the flavor split, we can observe that there's a growing presence of fruits and liquids and expansion of sweets and candy on top five on our retailers. And if we have a closer look inside each category, we will also observe that lemonades are experiencing a substantial growth, increasing its presence inside their category by 22% and representing nowadays over half of the, of the offer of beverages, even if beverages as a category is fairly flat. This might also be linked to the popularity of fruits as, lemony, as lemonades are likely to contain them. So even inside some categories such as beverages, we are seeing fruit-related flavors increasing their share and the cost of the rest of flavors being coffee, the, the most affected. Also, having a look at the categories that are experiencing larger change, cake suffered the largest, uh, larger loss in desserts and bakery, while pies and tarts are the most resilient to the fall. On the fruits category, prom fruits, which is mainly apple, and tropical fruits, mainly mango, are the ones helping the most to the growth of, of the category. But if we have a look at the online offer and we compare it with the popularity of flavor categories in the US, which comes mainly from our consumer survey, we observe that although both fruits and sweets grow in popularity, only the offer of the first is increased. So we see that consumer preferences for sweets and candy have been increasing, but its offer has not, what might be explained by a higher regulatory pressure on this specific category. Important differences also appear when we look at the demographic profile of consumers. Data from our consumer survey shows that both sweets and candy and fruit popularity decreases with age. On the other hand, we have tobacco, which is mostly consumed by older vapors, being one of the potential reasons why it is a flavor that has generally been excluded for flavor bans or restrictions. And just like tobacco, menthol is the other flavor that could be exempted on an eventual flavor ban. For that reason, it might be interesting to have a look at those two flavors as they also have some differences. On the left, um, we have tobacco, which is almost only used in tobacco products. This means that e-liquids containing tobacco have generally tobacco as a main flavor. We can also see that its online offer has grown during the last four years but particularly in 2020. On the other hand, on the other side, we have menthol, which is much more popular as a complement. In that sense, we see that only 30% of the products that contain menthol have menthol as a main flavor, while the other 87% menthol is a complement or a cooling agent, being particularly popular in the fruits category. Of course, this 87% of e-liquids that contain menthol but do not have it as a main flavor are more subject to potential, to potential bans than menthol-only flavors, which have been already excluded, for example, from Perfil Pot's flavor bans. However, our 2019 BIPs survey points out that menthol and tobacco represent just a small percentage of BIP store revenues meaning that flavor bans at the state level or even the consequences of the PMTA might strongly reduce their income and the vaping market in general as the offer and the variety of liquids would strongly reduce. So that's all from me. I would lastly like to do a brief summary of what we have talked about and the trends that we have observed in the US vaping market. So we started talking about the popularity of pre-filled pots, their online offer and flavor profile variations, where we have seen that strong impact that the flavor van has had on the market. We've also talked about the complexity of flavor of those pots and how they are getting less and less complex with the time. And finally, we had a look at the flavors mixed the most with tobacco and discovered that vanilla was the most popular in the closed pots category. Then we talked about refillable pots and we've seen that their popularity is increasing during the last years. We've also seen that among refillable pots users, there is a decreasing percentage of them using a secondary device. And the reason why is that refillable pots are getting more and more sophisticated and capable to adapt to each vapor vaping style. Then we also talked about the nicotine, nicotine levels. And we've seen that the US has had the greatest growth in terms of average nicotine strength during the last years, mainly due to the growing presence of nicotine salts. However, we've also pointed out that the average nicotine strength of nicotine salts is slowly decreasing. 
And finally, we talked about flavors since many trends that we see in the US are a bellwether for the rest of countries around the world. We've observed that fruits are gaining ground at the expense of desserts and bakery, and that lemonades are experiencing a huge growth inside the beverages category. We've also seen that the offers of sweets and candy is decreasing, although its popularity is going up. And we also had a look at menthol and tobacco, as they have been generally excluded from bans and restrictions. And we've seen that while tobacco is generally only used in tobacco liquids, menthol is mostly used as a complement, particularly for fruity liquids. And lastly, we had a look at the importance of these flavor profiles for vape shops and concluded that the market still depends a lot on flavor variety. So that was all from me. Thank you so much for, for attending to this presentation. And please do not hesitate to contact with me in case you have any doubt. You can do it through email, through LinkedIn. And if you want to know more about this intelligence, who we are and what we do, um, please follow us on social media or visit our website, easyintelligence.com. Thank you so much and have a great day.